Okay guys, here we are again, doing a uh, little paint session here. I'm gonna try to shoot for about an hour and uh, see if we can knock down, knock out another uh, Irish figure. So uh, earlier today, I finished up um, another one of these uh, Javelin guys, an Essex figure here. This one, now we didn't paint his, uh, we didn't paint his shield yet, his shield design. He will have a shield design, but we're gonna wait until in the morning to do that. Um, I've got some ideas I want to look at on, that I got from the internet, but that's on my phone right now, so can't really do both. So we're going to roll into this guy. Now, this is specifically a figure that I would call not one of my favorite poses, so we'll have to see what we can do him to uh, make him look pretty cool. Okay, but this, this particular figure here, he's also from Essex. So we're going to paint him up uh, using the same uh, method that we did uh, previous which is using the same core color of this gold brown, um, this color here, this gold brown from Vallejo, number 126 or 877. This is what we're gonna use and uh, as the core thing. So, which is funny because the lighting in here is making it look like on, on the screen here I'm seeing, it makes this look almost canary yellowish, but it's not, it's more of a, um, like a goldenrod type color. So uh, anyhow, that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna pour ourselves a little soda here. Don't wanna do coffee this late. It's uh, 10 p.m. here. So this is kind of a late ses painting session for myself. But uh, this will be the fifth figure I am working on of the 10 skirmishers in the army. So after those 10 guys are done, we're going to um, varnish them, and that is, um, and, and we're going to base them up. So we're going to have uh, six stands of skirmishers to kind of give us an idea what the rest of the army look is going to be. So um, that's uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to start off with this guy. We've already uh, primed him uh, with some black paint, and I noticed that he seems to have a little bit of a long chin hairs here so we're going to take care of that here quickly there we go just a little bit of flash and then that's good so all the other figures that most of them had some kind of facial hair they had beards the first three that i did um, this last guy the casting didn't have any facial hair at all and it looks like this guy won't either so this guy was a uh, dark haired guy with uh, no facial hair this guy we're going to make him uh, we're going to make this guy red haired so Okay, so, um, all right, so let's get started with the whole red-brown thing, the, um, the golden brown. So here is our core color. Now, we probably put this on here like three or four days ago. Let's see if we can move this water thing to the left-hand side here and uh, not cover in front of the camera so much. And let's do an autofocus over here and right. Okay, so here we put this down. This should still be good enough to go with. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. So here is the core color that we used, and um, we're going to make this guy. Uh, we're we're going to use a black, so you guys will get a chance to see what this looks like when we start adding black to this color. So let's find ourselves a clear spot over here, and our black is still alive here. So we're going to grab some black, move it over here, and see how it turns green. Gives it kind of a green tinge to it. This is what the base color is going to be on this, uh, on his shirt, which is what they're wearing, just basically a long shirt. We're going to paint his entire long shirt in this color. And this guy's also not wearing a sword. This guy should be pretty easy to do. So we are starting this, my paint session kind of late, late for me anyways, but we should be able to get this guy done tonight. So that'll be one less guy that we'll have to do in the morning. So plan doing a bit of mountain painting this weekend so we can uh, move forward. really want to see what these guys are going to look like uh, based up. 
because we're going to do a little something a little bit different. This is a DBA army. This is a uh, a forest army. So we're going to make the we're going to do the basing a little bit different. It's not going to be crazy, but uh, we're going to make it a little bit brighter maybe than we than we're used to. So again, this is a medieval Irish army list. So um, like I mentioned in other videos, it was surprising to me that you they don't really use green. Uh, the original Irish color is um, is yellow. Yellow is original color for mythology and has to do with the sun god or something like that. I need to find the exact story and like and know it, but I kind of glanced over what the story was and it was like they used uh, a lot of their uh, clothing was dyed with saffron um, or a saffron type color. So you're looking like a yellowish type hue and uh, apparently... There's a, some kind of a tie-in where the English, when they fought the English, the English basically outlawed them, uh, didn't want them wearing the saffron clothing, and um, to find out exactly what the story is, it's kind of interesting. It's not what you would have thought. You would have thought, oh yeah, green, right? But uh, no, it's uh, it has to do with the saffron thing. So that when I found out that that was the case, and you look at pictures for these guys that. Uh, artwork and books and also uh, pictures other people have painted like when they're selling figures and you know even though I'm not painting 28 millimeter figures there's a lot of really good resources by people that paint 28 millimeter figures like stuff for Saga and stuff like that that gives you ideas for maybe not exactly how to paint these paint your figures but what some color combinations what they look like together so I do like to use that kind of stuff not uh, as a Bible or anything, but just kind of for more inspiration. So um, that's when I said, okay, well, I'm going to do a challenge. I'm going to paint my entire army with this as my core color, which is what you see most of the figures painted in some kind of a uh, goldenrod type color with a saffron thing. All of, my, all of my foot troops will have this as their core color. And you can see by the four I've painted so far, they look significantly different. Let me bring them over here to the camera. They look significantly different. See this figure here? This looks very green. This is kind of what I'm going with for this guy. It's going to be a similar color to that. So um, they're all going to look the same but different, similar to my uh, carriage that I just finished, that they all have uh, off-white type linen clothing. It's going to be the same thing with these guys. These guys are all going to have this kind of this theme where... They're going to look like commoners, but it'll it's going to look varied. It's not like everybody's in exactly the same shade. So, All right, so we're going to take the same color that we did, and we're going to bring it up a notch by adding more of the core color here. And this is just uh, the method I use to paint. I've just always done this, not always, but since the mid-90s, and I've been pretty happy with it. And this is the part that I'm really, I really enjoy making these folds of the, the clothing and stuff. So uh, it's kind of a little free form. Follow the, uh, follow the the way the moldings are on the figure, but also a little bit of um, um, it's the word I'm thinking of. It's um, Ah, forget what it is. But it's uh, a style like um, Monet, impressionistic. That's what I'm thinking of. It's a little impressionistic the way I, I, I paint some of this clothing. So um, it's fun to kind of go back and forth and bring it to life. So this is, there's parts of the painting process I don't like. And, that, and this is not one of them. This is the clothing's cool. Painting things, making things look like they're made of wood when they're really not. Um, that's another part I enjoy as well. And I enjoy doing the faces and things like that. It brings these guys to life. So This guy should paint in no time. He literally has no sidearms. He has one javelin. He has a pose I don't like. And maybe you can see it a little bit better now. But this is... And you, may, you see it the most from the top view. And maybe it's done this way because of casting... But the way his uh, javelin is, it's almost at the same angle that his arm is. It just, to me, it looks like just a lazy casting that's very, like everything's, I'm fine with this guy completely except for that javelin pose. 
But I'm going to go on with them. I've only got one of these guys in the army. I was fortunate that I had enough figures to do this whole army. But and only uh, I don't have any repeats in these in these uh, in these soloi in these skirmishers at all. So um, I wanted to, uh, even though I'm not thrilled about this guy, uh, I am going to add him. He's just one guy. So it's annoying when you buy like a say an army pack, okay, and you've got these skirmishers, and there's only two poses, but you've got six stands to make of them. So you got 12 figures and half of them are in this pose. It just doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't look right. Now, when you've got a bunch of different ones, this guy's going to blend in with just all the rest. So uh, that's just my feeling. Maybe somebody's out there and says, man, I really like that pose. But uh, and it's not an Essex thing. Uh, Essex makes some uh, fine figures. Uh, just some of the poses sometimes by some of the manufacturers just seem uh, a little wooden, not to my taste. Um, Anyhow, that just happens to be this guy, so um, he'll be just fine with all his other buds. But we're just um, painting this up, and we're probably on the next next level going to have to uh, use a little bit smaller brush just to show off a little bit more of a fine shadowing on there or the highlights. But this is really, I, I find this particularly mindless doing this this process right here so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do this yellow color and then we're gonna do the flesh on them and then we're probably gonna do the shield which we're gonna leave kind of like a basic brown we're gonna look at shield designs tomorrow that's what we're gonna do tomorrow morning when we wake up we're gonna do the shield for this guy and his his other guy and we're gonna kind of uh, walk the line between not too busy and not too plain because these guys are not, um, they don't have the money to, um, to buy an expensive shield or anything for them. They're just, uh, just regular kerns, just uh, levy type troops. Okay, um, let's move over to the smaller brush. All right, and where we left off is, let's add a little bit more of the core color. See if we can. Zoom in a little more there. These yellows tend to be a little on the watery side anyways, which works fine for my uh, painting style once you get the first coat down because I paint kind of transparent like layers. Um, so some of the color underneath each layer sh shines through. It's not necessarily done for that purpose. I just kind of started doing this. I think so we could build up different layers, but they're not thick enough to cover up any detail. So if you're you know, if you're painting full on paint, you're going to end up covering details when you put six or seven different layers on, on it, especially faces. So I think that was just kind of a byproduct of not covering up the details is, uh, is to, um, is to have them kind of thin down when I paint them. So that's just kind of, um, yeah, how, how it works for me. So. Now, so this guy will use the same lightener as him. But what we did is, at this figure, we didn't go all the way to here. We stopped maybe one shade before and started lighting them up. This one, we're going to go to the core color. And that way, they're the same but different. Okay, and... Yeah, the next shade, we're going we're gonna to add a lightener to it. And um, we'll probably use white for that. Don't need a whole lot. And there should be enough paint here still to be able to work on that because we're not going to add either the white dye on me. 
Yeah, it'll still last two or three days, but you know, there's enough in here to finalize. So we're just going to put some over here and we're going to blend it in. We don't need to go. We don't need to get too crazy. And we're just going to hit the shoulders. Any folds here on the shirt. I mean, I'm hardly using any paint at all. And I think what I'm going to do on these figures is I'm going to take a picture of them before I varnish them. And then after I varnish them so I can show you guys the difference of what the varnish does. It's amazing. I mean, as soon as, and, and my varnish coats are, uh, uh, one coat of spray gloss, and that's dry. One coat of spray matte, and then when that's dry, I will do a brush on matte. And just when you put the one coat of the spray gloss, you look at them, they look totally different. It's almost like it evens out all the, all the different irregularities of the color. It's pretty amazing, really. Um, I do need to go watch a video on... Uh, on how to take better photos with this phone because the video on this phone is amazing. I do everything through a phone. Just got one two weeks ago. Um, but um, the uh, quality of the um, the video is, is much superior, but I'm ha it's having trouble focusing like where I normally pretty much just point and click and I knew my other phone really well how to take pictures. This one, I'm, I'm having trouble getting everything into focus. I can get certain things, but it starts the, the focus dissipates uh, really quickly from the other things that aren't exactly in the center of the picture. So we'll have to tinker with that um, and see if I can't get that uh, coming out a little bit better. Because some of the stills I've been less than happy with um, with it. So. I'm not a big fan of learning about the technology or whatever. It changes so quick that it's like, you know, why bother learning it? You're just going to be wasting your time on something like that. But I think for this case, I'm going to have to watch a couple of videos on, uh, on how to get the focus on there a little bit better. Yeah, so we're just putting some folds in here. So it gives it some three-dimensionality. And then we can go on and do the skin. If you guys hadn't seen my skin video, how to paint that, you'll get a good chance to see it again. It's right here. This is the, what the coloration type things are. It's it's actually, this one's probably more accurate because this is, this is the bottom color and then we're gonna come up at the top and do something like this. But um, this is there's not a whole lot of paint, so that dried out already since uh, that was done uh, yesterday, I believe, so. Ah, a little bit more, a little bit more. That's the problem is when you're doing this, you're like wondering, okay, should I stop? Should I go a little bit more? Okay, that's probably good enough. Uh, I'm not going to uh, varnish these guys until they're all done, so that's why I can come back and when all 12 of these figures are done, I, might, I may end up wanting to do like, say a stripe along the bottom of their shirt or something like that. I'm able to do that and it's no harm, no foul. So let's mix this up some flesh, all right? So to do that, we're going to use red leather and black Vallejo red leather and Vallejo oh wrong one that's why you check this is uh, desert yellow almost the same uh, sunny skin tone as the other one okay and black and white all right so we're gonna take the red leather 
which there's some still here. There's some still alive here. So we're just gonna grab that. No, no point in putting more of that out there. Now, I do need to get to the center of this little bubble. Okay, and we're gonna put it here. And then we're gonna grab black. And put it here and then mix those two together. A little bit darker. A little bit darker. And this is going to be our bottom shadow on all the flesh parts. So we're going to take the entire, anything that's flesh on this dude, and we're, and we're going to paint it in this color. Have a little bit of a sip. And here we go. Just cover all of it. You find another guy with shoes on? Boy, these guys are, uh, I think this guy's not barefoot. He's got shoes on. Wow. He's living a life. We'll definitely have to make sure that both of these guys aren't on the same stand. If you have one stand of skirmishers with shoes on. <laughs> Who do they think those guys are? <clears throat> okay, and when you get to the face, we're going to paint every little bit of it in this color. Yeah, this is a strange pose, but he'll turn out okay. And like I said, he's only one, so. I did get one pose figure that's damn near useless. I just refuse to use him as one of the skirmishers. Um, I'd show him to you if I had him handy. You gotta grab him in the morning, and then if I do a paint thing in the morning, I'll show you guys uh, what that looks like. Okay, just about done with him. Okay, so we're gonna ditch this brush because it's just, it's putting, putting things in way too many different places. All right, let's go grab some more of this, uh, of this core uh, red leather and put it over here and blend that in. So we, now we have a more leather-like color. Okay, and now we're going to, yeah, many of these figures I end up painting, they'll end up having details that I don't realize that they have until I'm painting them. And then I'm like, oh, so that's what that is. And that's kind of what happened with these shoes. I said, I'm painting his, you can tell he's bare-legged, but he has no toes showing. Uh, because Essex molds like to toes and stuff if they have them. I don't know if they have the right amount of toes, but <laughs> we can definitely tell there's toes there. And this guy didn't have them. He just has these little, like, uh, slip-on little loafer leather things. So um, we will paint those up like their um, like their shoes. And we're going to do them in a contrasting color so they, they show up a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to finishing these guys. Mainly because this is an unusual army that you don't see many people do. It's a very light army. Read kind of a crappy army. Uh, it's not very powerful. But we're going to be using them to fight other uh, skirmisher type armies to, that we fight. Those, those make up really cool, really cool uh, battles. But the other thing we want to do is there's going to be a few things that we're going to be able to do with this army that... Um, I haven't been able to do in a while. Uh, one of them is there's going to be an unboxing involved. 
Uh, got the cavalry for these guys. Uh, I didn't have any of the cavalry in all of my lead mountain, so I had to uh, order the cavalry. And um, I wasn't necessarily happy with one particular pose that they had for these guys, so I ordered a variety. So you guys will get to see an unboxing from a manufacturer I've never ordered before, and I don't think anybody's ever done an unboxing of them. Kind of some older school figures, so you'll get to see that. And uh, their camp, uh, I'm gonna try to make a little Irish castle. So, um, with uh, made out of styrofoam. Not the scale, more like uh, six millimeter scale. I tend to like terrain in six millimeter scale to go with the 15 millimeter figures so that the, the terrain is more in scale with the ground scale of the game, more so than the figures. Uh, I think it works better. Uh, I like that, uh, that look. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay, so we've got this guy painted with just the one shade on top of the first one. He looks pretty ratty right now, but uh, don't worry, it's, uh, it's, it will look better. It, it will look, uh, not really much to look at right now. You almost can't even tell that it has another color on there. All right, so now we're gonna go to almost straight this right here. Oh, we do need to do the eyes. Let's go ahead and do that now. Unfortunately, they, they sculpted eyes on them, so if they sculpt the eyes on them, you gotta paint them. Or it's gonna look weird. We're gonna need some fresh white for this. This is about dead over here. Tend to put the white and the black in the center of the wet palette because it's accessible from all sides. They get used in just about all the colors I do. So we're going to grab us a really thin brush. You don't have to put a whole lot down there. That's it. I mean, there's hardly anything. Okay. Then, I'll take no time to dry. Then we'll grab black. All we're going to do is paint a vertical stripe in the middle of what I just did with hardly any paint. I'm not really painting the eye, I'm kind of getting the impression that there's an eye there. Okay. You probably can't even see it, but you can on closer inspection. That's all I do. You know, if um, some figure manufacturers don't have eyes on them and you don't have to paint them, but if they do and they, they almost like bug out a little bit, you're kind of up a creek. You're gonna have to paint them or, or it won't look right. All right. finish the rest of his face on up. You guys have any questions, feel free to chime in. A couple of you guys are watching. I appreciate it. Helping me stay awake and, um, and get this guy painted. And um, yeah, looking forward to doing the shields. One of the, one of the things I like to do is shields. Okay, so we've got this uh, core red leather. And... The other reason to kind of put the, the colors kind of uh, thin is that it helps them blend better when you layer them on the, on the level underneath. And don't think I put a lot of thought into painting this way. It just kind of happened. And it was almost like after the fact, oh, 
this kind of works out cool when you do it this way. It wasn't like I sat around and had some kind of a painting conference and decided this is how I was going to paint. It just kind of happened. So, um, no, I think we, I think we have a comment. I got to put my glasses on to see. Let's see. Who do we have? What do we have here? Hello there, lad. Good bit of painting there, lad. Awesome. And that's from Um Hum. U M space space H M. Yes, I'm trying to get some painting here, and I am painting lads. As a matter of fact, the Irish. So we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun gaming with these guys, for sure. I need to. Uh, I need to learn some uh, Irish phrases and um, yeah, and say those, crack those out at the right time when I'm playing against uh, my opponent. That's uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, the cool thing about these guys is is that I'm basically painting in a multinational force just in the, in the process of one army list because these guys have there's they have Scottish uh, troops in there and they're also going to have a um, uh, what they call the Scots Isles and Highlanders. You can they can be an ally, and that's um, Vikings that settled in um, in the islands off of. Um, Scotland's coast. So there'll be a variety of different types. So we're going to be painting. Uh, of course, we're going to leave those fun guys toward the end. I, I want to get these more boring looking folks done first. So we're going to have some, uh, we're going to paint these uh, skirmishers first. Then we're going to roll into the, um, the Axemen, the Gallo Glacier. I'll have to see how to how to pronounce them correctly, because uh, I'm not a native Gaelic speaker, but uh, I am more than welcome to say them in the correct manner. Um, I speak two languages fluently, so it gives me kind of an idea how to say other things. So you know, I don't mind saying things correctly if I know how. So we're gonna watch some stuff on that, but we're gonna do the Gallo Glacier guys next. And then we'll start going into some Scots allies and stuff like that. I'm going to paint uh, Edward the Bruce. We're going to get to paint him up. One of the general stands uh, for the Scots will be him. Along with some Scottish pikemen. So going to be doing a uh, little bit of variety here on that. Definitely looking forward to these guys. Like I said, I enjoy doing the stuff that you don't see people doing much of. I mean, how many more Carthaginians and Roman armies do you guys need to see? You know? I mean, everybody already does those, so. Um, I'd rather do things that are different. All right, so we are almost done with this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to add this color here. Start over here beside it. Not that I'm worried about them bleeding over too much. And we're going to get some sunny skin tone. And we're going to blend these two together. And that's going to be our next level up. Is something like this. And I do paint figures by the each. And the reason I do that is because after one hour, I will have a guy completed and have something to show for it. And be able to show folks what I've done and feel good about it. Not spend an hour where I'm not complete. I didn't complete anything. That's just me. I mean, I am the exception. Most people paint assembly line or or do all the flesh together or that kind of a thing. So uh, the wet palette definitely helps you where you be able to mix this and then paint several figures with the same shade, but 
Believe it or not, if you've done this for a while, it's really easy to mix the same shade back up. Um, it's it's not difficult um, if you just if you've done it for a while. But it does save you time from um, you know. I can see some of these colors. I've I put the I put it down several days ago, and it's still alive there where I can use them. So it saves it saves paint, but really saves time of stopping and pulling the paint out of the bottle, that kind of a thing. That's that's kind of time consuming. So this guy right now has kind of the skin tone of like a, I'd say like a Mayan Indian, kind of a red brown. So as we start adding some of the skin tone, sunny skin tone mix. You're going to see less and less of that. So for a camp for these guys, even though a camp is supposed to be movable, um, Oh, you know what? I've got sheep. I've had sheep that I've had for a long time. I think I'm going to do like a little shepherd type uh, camp. That might be cute. I could use that for the some Scots if I do any Scots as well. Maybe I'll do that. But I was thinking there's a... Um, I live in Florida and there's a, um, a town relatively near us called St. Augustine. I'm sure everyone's aware of what St. Augustine is. It's the first permanent European settlement. Um, for in the Americas um, that survived because uh, I'm sure if the Vikings put anything down it's, you know, it, it went away but it's an hour and a half from where we're at and some guy got the idea maybe 20 years ago 20, 30 years ago he wanted just north of it on the beach build an Irish style castle it's called Castle Otis you guys can look that up on the internet. So when you type it, type castle space O T T T I S. So it's three T's. Two words: castle, Otis, Otis with three T's. And uh, it's a semi-religious type of um, uh, creation that the uh, the guys kind of did on their own. And it's a beautiful castle. I've never been inside of it, but I've, I've driven it. You're driving down a beach road right there on A1A by the uh, by the beach and boom, what's this 10th century Irish castle doing here? Anyhow, uh, that's going to be my inspiration for a fort. I think I'm going to do a fort based on that and I'm going to uh, make it out of foam. So um, it's not going to be lift off top or anything. It's just going to be, you know, DBA style fort or something like that. I think I'm going to do that for these guys. Oh, you know what? I better check and make sure a forest army can even do that. Well, if it can't, then that'll I will do that for a camp, but I'm definitely gonna make try to make a Castle Otis looking thing. You guys could check it out if you. They have a website and uh, there's even interior pictures. It's got like sixty or sixty or something openings in the castle, and no windows. So you know you could pigeons and stuff can go inside, and they hold weddings and I think church services uh, once a month or something like that. It's non denominational. It's just a kind of generic. Uh, Christian type of castle, but uh, services there, but uh, yeah, check that out. It's a it's a cool place. I've driven by it. I've never been inside. So, uh, like, what's an Irish castle doing in uh, on a Florida beach? But there it is. So we're gonna do something like that. I haven't done one of those foam things in a while. Um, and they're really easy to do, really easy to do, if you know what you're doing. Um, they're not very durable, so if you sit on it, it's over. <laughs> but it's not meant for that. I've got uh, a Chinese one that, uh, a Chinese uh, wall section, two Chinese wall sections that, that I've made, and they've lasted over 10 years, so... Um, and that's just using that high density foam type stuff that you can cut with a, with like one of those battery operated um, wire cutters, you know, that get warmed up. So that's what the plan is going to be, but I've got to earn that. I've got to finish painting the whole army first. So 
That's, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Something Forrest can't have. I don't have a Forrest army. Well, my Russians. I haven't completed my Russians yet. Um, I need to do a couple of stands of cavalry, but um, Forrest can't have road. Can't. You know what? That's going to drive me bananas. I'll be right back. We're going to look and see what Forrest can't have. at page uh, page six battlefield terrain forest compulsory is one or two woods duh river marsh gentle hills extra woods BUA yeah it's a BUA so they can have uh, they can use that little village that I have excellent Oh, I've got another little village to do. It's kind of like a really Celt village. So that would be able to build that as well. And also, B, so BUA can be uh, city, fort, hamlet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have fun with that. We're going to have fun with these guys. Absolutely. Sorry for a little uh, sidetrack there. But, um, yeah, road is what they cannot have. You can't have a road, so I won't be able to use my old adage of always put a road down. Well, they can't have a road, so I can't put a road down. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. So, yeah, this whole army is pretty much going to be pretty plain looking. Um, except for... Um, well, the nightstand won't be. We're going to have an Irish warlord, of course. We'll have to come up with a funny name for him. <clears throat> I'm sure I'm going to have fun with that. Um, been listening to Irish History Podcast, which is a little hard to follow sometimes because of the pronunciations. But, um, yeah, but... Trying to get some inspiration from that while uh, doing the painting. Not while I'm doing the painting, but, you know, on the drive to work and so forth. So, just getting in the whole spirit of it. So, I've been talking about building an Irish army by St. Patrick's Day forever. So, um, I, think I, I think I started early enough this time. I think I started early enough this time. I've got, heck, it's early August. I should have them done. Uh, by Christmas for sure. That's even a little extreme. I don't want to rush them, but man, it sure seems like I'm making good progress on these guys. But I'm painting every day just about, so definitely uh, enjoying that. They gave this guy lips. Don't why did they do that? No, you paint, you give me lips, now I gotta paint lips. This is actually a pretty good casting. Other than the pose, and you know what? The pose doesn't bother me that much. As I'm painting him up, he's kind of he's kind of growing on me. All right. So let's, uh, he's a red haired guy, right? Well, he definitely have to lighten him up more unless he's just came back from the, well, that was loud. And some guy with a death wish on motorcycle, sounds like. Okay. We gotta lighten this guy up if he's gonna be red haired, unless he's uh, burnt like a lobster. All right. Hey, good evening, Sarah. How are you? 
just doing a little bit of painting here. And my world famous monologue. <laughs> Very late for me to be doing this. I do much better at even four in the morning than, wow, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And if you guys follow on Facebook as well, we'll have pictures of uh, these guys when they're completed. A little bit close in, like I said, I have to, I have to figure out how to use this new phone. It's it's there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't focus. I need to maybe find a, an app other than the standard phone app because what's happening is it's focusing really well in one spot, and as soon as you start getting farther away from it, it starts blurring fast. So that is uh, that's kind of a problem I have. So. Um, why'd they give this, oh, Hank, why'd they give this guy lips? Now I have to paint lips. You had me laughing. It's true. Most figures don't have lips and it's something you don't think about, you know, it's, uh, but this guy's got lips and they're kind of, you know, dare I say he has an Irish duck face. I don't know. Um, maybe somebody took his whiskey. He's upset about it. I, anyhow, um, yeah, in case you guys weren't paying attention, I'm painting an Irish army, so we're going to have fun with that. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to have to get some good phrases, some good Irish phrases to uh, blur it out at the right time when I'm playing my opponent. So uh, that will be a lot of fun. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, the surprising thing to me is is most of these guys are all dress in some form of yellow because yellow is actually the Irish color. I'm going to, that's going to be my goal tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to write down that story or the background and, uh, and tell it because I think it's kind of unique. People don't know that, that apparently the Irish color is not green. It's yellow. And, uh, and it has to do with some mythology from the Scots Irish before Christianity of, uh, of one of their deities, uh, almost like a sun God type thing. God, I hope I'm not inventing a lot of this up, but uh, I, I, I read the gist of it uh, about a week ago, and it surprised me that everybody is, uh, wears these saffron clothing. So the English actually tried to ban them from wearing uh, yellow, and, uh, and I think there's even a tie-in with the whole yellow is the color of cowardice comes from that, like they're trying to put them down. So I'm going to find out what that story is. And I'll report back to you guys next time I do a painting session. But yeah, it's really fascinating, the stuff that's kind of snuck into uh, our language and we don't even know why. And uh, a lot of it is based in uh, historical facts, uh, historical things from uh, conflicts, you know. So anyhow, good stuff, good stuff. Hey, you could learn a lot from playing a stupid game. Um, anyways, it makes for good conversation, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to find out exactly what that story is behind that. But the hard thing is going to be finding out, finding where I saw that. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's the, they wear this, this saffron clothing. So at that point, I'm like, well, if I'm going to have to paint them all yellow, then I'm going to take the added challenge of using the same yellow tint, but then, uh, this, the same yellow color in all of their tunics, but then uh, highlighting it differently. So that's that's my own personal challenge. And so far I'm uh, pretty happy with it. I didn't have to do that. I just figured, well, let's just, uh, let's just do that spin. Like for instance, this is the saffron tint that they had for the clothing. So the only thing I can change is, you know, sometimes one particular uh, cloth is absorbs the tint differently. And sometimes uh, one cloth is they wore it, but it got dirty. And, uh, you know, the washing techniques of the Middle Ages are not what they are of modern times. So, you know, tide can't get it all out, you know. So 
you're going to have grass stains if you're rolling around on the grass. So anyhow, that's my spin. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. The other thing that was surprising, it doesn't really apply to these guys, but um, that they um, they tended to have mustaches, okay? And that was another thing that the English supposedly looked down on them. Again, we're talking about the medieval period, not later when everybody had mustaches, but that was just another thing that it was like, um, that kind of distinguished themselves, so. Well, we've got this guy I mean, you can't tell. The lighting in here is just really weird. I mean, it's not for me. It's for the camera. It's got too much white balance on it. But anyhow, we'll have a picture of this guy when he's done. I think he's just about done with that. Let's, um, let's see. Let's do the javelin first. Then we'll do his red hair. We'll have to put off doing the red hair first. And, of course, obviously it's not going to be going red. It's going to be, you know... Hair is not really that color. I mean, I guess it could be, but this guy doesn't have the money for one of those treatments. So he's just going to have to do it a little bit more naturally, whatever he's left with. So uh, let's grab a bigger brush and we're going to use dark sand. We're going to do a light color javelin on this guy. And just throw this down anywhere. Awesome. All right, where's my black? Where's my black at? Right here in the middle. Okay, so we got like a grayish type color. That's fine. That's just gonna just cover that whole javelin except a little tip. Not the tip. We're going to leave that for adding the, the head of it. We're going to paint that um, the metal color. Okay, get underneath here. Again, this will look so different when it's uh, when it's varnished. I don't know what the magic of the varnish is, but there's definitely magic there. It just ties everything all together a lot better. Good uppity Irishman wearing shoes. Wow. Like I said, it's unusual for these lower class people to be wearing shoes. They just didn't, even in battle, I can't imagine going into battle barefoot. I can't even walk to my car barefoot. And these guys just go. Everywhere on their own two feet. All right. How many pieces in this Irish army? Okay, so how many pieces in the Irish army? So there's, um, it's gonna be kind of big. Um, these light little skirmish dudes, they're gonna go, these are gonna go two figures on a stand. Okay, and there's gonna be six stands of them. So that's all the light troops. Then, um, darn it, you're going to make me do math and it's late. Oh, we got a little handy thing here. So we've got uh, 12 stands of these skirmishers. Okay. Then uh, 12 figures of the skirmishers. Then we've got to do uh, three stands of blades. And there's four figures on each of those. So that's 12 figures for the blades. Um, we've got to do... Uh, a light horse general, another light horse, 
and a cavalry. That's two figures, two figures, and three mounted figures. What else is left? Um, that's it. That's the minimum that I need to do for them. So that's uh, 12, 24, uh, 26, 28, 31. So it's 31, but I'm going to need to do the, um, the Scottish options. And the Scottish options are a Knight General, so that's three mounted figures, two stands of uh, solid pikes, so the pikemen, that's eight figures total for those two stands, so that's an additional 11. So now we're up to 42 figures, and we're also going to do the three stands that I'm going to bring in for the allies of the Scots Isles and Highlands. Um, which are Viking looking guys uh, as allies. And that's 12 of them. So that's 42 plus 12, 53 figures. 53 figures, there you go. Which is actually quite a bit, but a good vast majority of these folks are not very complicated. And what I mean by that is this guy's got a, he's wearing a muumuu. We'll, we'll call it simple. It's not a muumuu, but uh, somebody told me in another post what it's called. I think it's called a lina. I don't know how it's spelled, but it's, it's spelled Lina, but I'm not sure how it's said. Uh, it's kind of just a, uh, an overshirt that what they wore. I suspect that they're wearing underwear. I would hope so. Um, but um, I guess they wouldn't need to. I mean, it is colored yellow, so if you spill some on, well, anyhow. Um, it's simple. It's, it's one tunic that they're wearing and um, one javelin. They've got, this guy's got no sidearm, so there's no side sword or anything to paint. And this darn near doesn't even have a belt. So it's, they're, they're quick painting figures. So that makes up for the fact that there's 52 figures in them. But um, what it's cool is it'll be different ways to play this army. It's not like you just play them a certain way. You can make them really light. You can make them kind of heavy because you can bring them with the uh, Scots general, the pikemen, um, use the uh, the blades they come with, the galoglish, which are the um, the two-handed uh, axes that uh, that the Irish used, and bring in uh, the mercenaries, the Scots Isles and Highlanders, the Island Viking, the Scots uh, Island Viking uh, descendants. And replace three of the skirmishers with them. So you you could kind of you could probably play these guys in an open setting and and probably do okay with them. Um, and I'm probably going to try that at some point. Um, and that's kind of nice. I was looking for a new army that was one that people had not done, was kind of unusual to do, and um, works for really light games and is usable in different uh, competition settings. So, as we do do a lot of games where you've got to, um, where you've got parameters of not being able to make them too heavy, or you have to have a certain amount of skirmishers in them, and and honestly, some of those games are are the more fun ones, where you've got um, you can't go in with your power army, you know, and uh, yeah, those are some of the game, best games that we've had on our channel. Is uh, those battles that involve those kind of wimpy stuff because you can always go and see lots of people playing with armies that are really good, you know? So, um, these little guys are just don't get all the love. So here's the, um, here is the, and you can't, it's just, this lighting just washes everything out with a the camera. There it is a little bit better farther away. A little bit better farther away. Loses the color, but that's the uh, that's the javelin. We get a good a little bit of metal here. This is the one of those little beads that I put in there, stainless steel beads to help mix this up. We just need a tiny little bit. And like I said, we're not going to paint the design on the shield tonight. We're gonna leave that for in the morning. We're gonna do a couple of shields. This and his other buddy are going to have uh, some shields in the morning. So the other guy's got shoes too, right? So that is that what part of the thing is? You get a fancy shield if you're wearing shoes? <laughs> or 
Wow. Okay. Well, maybe that's that. Maybe that's the, the maybe that's the Irish thing. Uh, okay. All right. So maybe the sculptor had that in mind. Let's. Um, all right. So we got to do the hair. We got to make this guy red hair. Well, we don't have to make him a redhead, but we will. Um, all right. Let's grab. Um, all right. Let's grab wood brown. That's not very redheaded. Ah. And we're gonna grab this golden yellow. So we're gonna grab this coat the arms, wood brown and golden yellow. Okay, and we'll see what we're gonna do with this. So we're gonna start off by grabbing this wood brown. I have not painted very many redheaded people, um, just by the nature of the of the armies I've been doing. But so this is a little bit of uncharted territory, but. Um, I'm sure we'll do just fine. We're going to put some of this right here. This is some of my favorite paint, this Coat the Arms paint. This stuff's pretty, is, flows really, really well. So This is the color I used a lot for the rifle butts on um, my German World War II. They have, looks very similar to the color on, um, on the Mausers. So. All right, mix a tiny little bit of black because we want some shadow. And we're going to paint all the hair. Let's close this little chat box here. Okay, we're going to paint all the hair in this color here. Because we want to put a base down that we're going to layer the lighter shades of this redhead on. Now, we're going to make him redheaded, but we're not going to make him redheaded like that kid that was picked on in school, okay? So, just warning you guys, we're not going to go that crazy, because that would end up being like, uh, like this, okay? We will have one of those guys in the army, so. <laughs> but not this guy. The freckled kid that would get all splotchy in the sun. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There's always one that, if you don't know who that person is, that might be you. <laughs> um, get hate mail for that. Oh well. Hey, I'm, I got nothing against them. Just. Uh... Hey, I'm putting them in my army. All right, a little bit more. Hopefully you guys are getting some painting done while this is happening. That's what I do a lot. I'll, I'll watch other people paint while I'm painting. All right, we're just gonna lightly go over this. We do want some of the of the brown that we put down to shunt, to come through, to add a little bit of uh, of um, of the shading on there, but not so much that it looks like he's got uh, brown hair. No. Okay, so everything I said about this figure, I didn't like his pose. Just forget what I said. That it's this guy is actually working really well. Hats off to you, Essex. This guy's actually looking pretty good. My biggest gripe with Essex is, is that if is those army packs, because I, I swear that sometimes you don't even make the, before I even started doing DBA, I was, I was collecting a game called Armadi. I only got a chance to play it one time, but I picked up a couple of army packs for Armadi when I was building um, some Renaissance Spanish. And I'll be damned if I didn't get the right, right, I got the wrong figures. I got the wrong figures for the time period that I got. And the, the, the thing that ticked me off is they make figures, they made the correct figures. I just didn't get those. Okay. And uh, not only that, but I didn't get a lot of figure variety either. So I'm like, well, maybe I ordered the wrong pack the wrong army box so I moved it a little later and I got the same 
wrong f- f- figures for uh, again they got it wrong again so i'm like you know what i'm not falling for that crap again i'm not buying army packs ever again so um i will just happily pick from their uh if i want to do their figures i will buy them from the pictures that i see on their website which they have 97 percent probably of all their fi- figures have a picture of them i don't know why the remaining ones aren't on there but they're not but uh, they do a pretty good job of uh, disc- of showing what's in each figure package. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily dislike the figures. I just, um, I wish the alloy they use was a little harder though. Um, they, they don't use a lot of tin in it. And um, well, I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's not very hard, it's bendy. Uh, just like it used to be like in the 80s. Um, I wish they would, uh, have a little bit more resistance to, to bending, but other than that, they, they, they make some fine castings. There's nothing wrong with them. I don't like some of their poses. They seem awkward, but I, that every figure manufacturer has some of those. So you just don't use those guys. You know? Or maybe they don't bother somebody else, you know? I don't love their horses. I don't love Essex horses. They have a lot of poses that's like, uh, I don't want it that you have a horse that's turned away from the rider. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with this guy or the horse with the head hung down in shame. Uh, I'm not a fan of those, but, but they work. And, and nothing says you can't just replace the horses with the different manufacturers' horses. I, I mix and match figures in an army, and I certainly mix and match... Um, I, I mix and match, uh, horse figures and, and what they're riding on. So that's why it never hurts to have extra figures. You never know what you're going to need them for. So it's going to lighten this guy up with the, this golden yellow. I can't believe I'm up this late. This is insane for me. I am not a late morning, a late evening person, much less a late evening painter. But hey, it works. I'm not going to complain. I think I'll disable my 5 a.m. alarm, which is normally my wake up time every morning okay so what do we have here so far so yeah he's a little bit he's more like a strawberry blonde i guess um maybe i just you know you guys got all excited about seeing some red-headed figure and now i'm copping out by making him a strawberry blonde <laughs> don't worry there'll be other ones so uh, a little bit more highlight Yeah, so I've been using the, the app that comes with the camera and also another one called Open Camera. Um, and yeah, neither one's given me the, the focus that I want. So I think in the morning I'm going to go and check out and see what other kind of free camera apps uh, that maybe can handle the, the, um, the focus issues I'm having a little bit better. Okay. Now, I just realized, I'm going to paint this guy's skin. I, he needs to be, he needs to be a little uh, more, um, pasty. Paste this guy up a little bit. There we go.
Haste, you redhead. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the same thing we did with the other one. We're going to go ahead and put a base color down for the shield, and we're not going to tinker with the shield till in the morning, okay? So all we're going to do is we're going to take some of this, um, let's go to the bigger brush. We're going to take some of this, um, is it still alive here? Barely. All right, we're going to take some of this and add a little bit of black to it, and we're just going to cover the shield just kind of in a basic color because I don't think the shields are going to be very bright in other words I think that we're still probably going to use a we're going to probably use a design and just leave like a, a wooden type background to the shield so um, I think leaving them in this color um, before we search for designs we're going to uh, should be able to work fine so And this is just a little skirmisher dude, so he's if he's got a shield, it's probably not going to be very fancy. Um, otherwise, he'd have more money to maybe be something else, other than a guy that just throws a job when he goes home. Just a part-time tosser. <laughs> That's what this guy would be. Oh, anyhow. That's how we're going to leave it for in the morning. It's just uh, just kind of a little base there to to work off of. And we'll grab his shoes in the morning, so we're not so worried about his shoes. Um, I tend to do stuff like that at the end, anyways, because in moving the figure over in my hand, I invariably end up scuffing up whatever I paint down here. So I, I don't want to go through all the trouble of painting his shoes and then it ends up getting scuffed up. So this is where we're going to leave uh, this guy and uh, him and uh, his buddy here. They're uh, both going to get shields in the morning. So uh, maybe we can give them a little bit more personality with that. But uh, anyhow, this will be the when we get done with this guy, we'll have five of these guys done. So we're halfway through the skirmishers in uh, just a matter of one week. So... That's pretty darn good by my um, by my count. So yeah, here they are. So uh, anyways, we'll catch you guys uh, next time. But uh, thanks for hanging in there with me, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I've got lots of other stuff on my YouTube channel, and uh, maybe you'll find interesting. All right, we'll catch you guys later, folks. Good night. Bye-bye.